All right, so we are waiting for people to join. We're about a minute early. When you do get in and see this, please say hi or give a wave or something like that. I'd love to know that I'm not talking into the ether. I am Jacqueline Kyle. I am the book production manager here at Book Launchers. And it looks like Mike is not seeing me yet. I got four viewers. Can someone confirm you can hear me and see me? I appreciate that. All right, and we'll just wait for a few more people to join. Hi, Alex, good to see you. So glad to have you uh, with us today. And thank you, I appreciate knowing that you can hear me as well as see me. Uh, hi, Angela, good to see everyone. And all right. So today we are gonna be talking about some uh, 2023 book trends, things that we can expect coming up this year. And uh, before I dive in, while we wait for a few more people to join, please tell me what you're either having for dinner or what you had for lunch, because I am really hungry right now. Long story short, I'm really hungry. I need some inspiration for food. So give me a little, like, this is the thing to eat right now. Um, and when this is over, I am definitely going to go and shove some food in my face. So I appreciate it. And <laughs> Mike, it's, it's late there. Oh, pizza rolls sound good. Pizza rolls sound really delicious. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see cover trends. I think everyone at the beginning of the year is kind of like assessing how did 2022 go? How do we want 2023 to go? And when it comes to book trends, you know, is the past prologue or are things going to, uh, to change? And I do have to say like, you know, at the end of the year in nonfiction, we saw a lot of Michelle Obama uh, moving a lot of books. It was like the number one seller at the end of the year. And then, you know, Prince Harry coming in um, two weeks into the year and, and moving 1.4 million copies on day one was just incredibly impressive. And so um, I think celebrity driven memoirs are, are something that is going to be a trend. And unfortunately, you know, us small people can't really jump in on those trends. Uh, but we will be covering quite a bit here that uh, you can action and that we all should be aware of going into this next year. And ooh, a fruit plate, that sounds good. Um, okay, so I'm going to kick it off with, I'm not sure how many people here uh, were here on our deep dive on Saturday, but I am gonna be showing some cover trends that we expect are, are gonna be taking off in 2023. Um, and some colors and fonts, uh, things that, you know, catch the eye, even as a thumbnail. Um, we're going to talk about AI um, and how that is changing the marketplace. And we're going to talk about uh, social media influencers and uh, a little bit about genres and Audible. So, uh, <laughs> yes, Angela, you were at the deep dive. Um, all right, so I think probably let's kick this off with a thank you and a prize announcement. Um, the prize for uh, every day, or every uh, twice a week, I think it's Tuesdays and Fridays, we post new videos. And if you comment on the day that a book is, or a, a book is a book is launched, a video is launched, uh, you can tell that I work for book launchers, not video launchers, uh, that every day that a video launches, if you comment on it, you're automatically entered to win. And this week, our Tuesday winner was Bonnie Lester, the amazing Bonnie. And the uh, Friday winner was Quizmaster China. 
So for both of those, if you would like to email um, uh, us at team at booklaunchers.com and ask for the prize, we'll get your address and, and confirm all of that up for you. Um, next up, I am going to share my screen. We're gonna give this a try and see if sharing my screen is gonna work. Um, and let's, uh, don't show those tips. All right. Let's see, and we are going to share 2023 cover design trends. Now, what you're looking at here is a slideshow that I am unapologetically borrowing from Cassie on our design team, who uh, compiled these for us for the deep book dive. And uh, one of the first things I'm gonna point out is this amazing color and the swash fonts. Both of those are gonna be a running trend for 2023, uh, starting with the color. That is uh, Pantone Viva Magenta. And it is what Pantone is predicting is going to be the color of the year. And Pantone is saying it is the courage to act, feel and embrace the unconventional. Uh, it is the kind of color that looks good basically anywhere. So you're gonna see it on clothes as well as on book covers. It's, it's gonna be the, um, the color that you're gonna see kind of popping um, all over the place. And next we've got cover designs. So we've got object-based book covers um, with a hint as to what they mean inside of the book. Now, Book Launchers is very much a, a nonfiction book company, and these are uh, fiction examples, but you can um, adapt some of these into uh, nonfiction, where uh, in this case, you know, it's called the Angel Maker. It, it's hinting at uh, something burning as well as the flames. Um, you've got the golden spoon. You're hinting at the, the greater setting and the object in question and origami murders it's like very clearly about origami it's a demonstration of what it is and then you know the blood stains on it are kind of showing uh what uh what is at stake and these kinds of things they're very simple but then they they hint at like the greater subtext what is at play and you can do this in a nonfiction setting as well. We've had a lot of uh, object-based covers in the past, you know, a, a piggy bank that was like really old and uh, kind of uh, put in the, the family heirloom of money and, and that sort of context within that cover. Uh, next up, trend-wise, there are a lot of, trends when it comes to these really ornate and intricate book covers. Uh, the first one that I saw that caught my eye um, several years ago was a time travel book where uh, all of these kind of flourishes were embroidered or appeared to be embroidered on the cover. And it, it seems to have taken off. And that my theory on this is that these ornate covers look really good as a thumbnail. And so you wanna click on it, make it bigger to see more, to see what is there. And so I think we're gonna to continue to see this as uh, as people get curious and click on it, that the sales will um, push these kinds of covers uh, into the bestseller list where you'll see more designers imitating it for, for a while yet. Um, and they, they do certainly look really good in digital and in print. Now, uh, next up, uh, this is a trend that is um, it started, and these examples are a lot of YA and romance, but we are beginning to see them now in nonfiction covers as well. Um, and I want to point out in particular that uh, while these are um, like cartoonish in a way, there's a lot of depth to it. And these designers are, you know, making that A stand out and begin again by pushing the clouds over the G. Um, and you are also, uh, you know, the the make a wish. You've got the swooshes of the wind as well. Um, 
that are are creating the depth in these covers. And then, you know, you've got the text over on witches are coming that is again pushing it out in front of the tree so that it looks like you've got the title and then you've got the person and then the tree behind it. So there's a lot of depth to these color these covers that um it's more than meets the eye is basically what I am saying. Uh, and then next up, we've got uh, a floral and botanic motif. We are seeing a lot of these. Um, there is a book that we have that uh, came out earlier this month um, by Kelly Tuttle. Um, and it really uses this floral motif. Um, these flowers in front of the face, there's at least two or three bestsellers that have that going right now. Um, and finding new ways to use food and uh, flowers as a layering effect is something that we are gonna continue to see this year. And then we've got typography. So if you are a font lover and we are font lovers, uh, what we are seeing is really big font, wall to wall, where you are seeing um, the font be really, really big. And not only does it like scream from a bookshelf, but it also is really easy to read as a thumbnail. So it does catch the eye. It's not like the really intricate ones where you click to see more. This one is like, boom, look at me in the thumbnail and click on me. It's a different approach solving the same problem. And then we've got, uh, you know, romantic comedy, uh, leading white sands. These all really play into very large fonts that people can see um, in a thumbnail very, very easily. Uh, bold. Again, we've got another one here. This one is not my favorite, I am going to say, because I don't know if I'm Googling the Black Kiss or the Black Kids or what other variation of this word back there. It might be a, a thing, again, where you click on it or you pick it up to understand what that book is and, and be able to dig in a little bit more. But just me right here trying to go, I saw this cover and I don't know what the title is. Um, you may want to play with it depending on how you think your discoverability is going to be. But you can see again that it's using that wall to wall text and uh, creating a sense of intrigue that you might want to click on it to learn more. And then uh, interlacing a pattern with text. So we saw a little bit of that back in the cartoon section where uh, you were interlacing to create dimension. And here we've got great typography that is being woven in and out of really catchy um, shapes. And it, it creates that 3D effect for your eye and draws you to it. It feels more comfortable than something that is just flat. Um, and my theory on that is that flat doesn't really happen in nature. Uh, we are, it, it feels wrong versus something that has a texture to it or the illusion of having depth makes you feel like, um, like it's a little bit more natural and, and uh, higher quality. And then use of collage. I love these. I can't wait to use one of these on our, our covers coming up. Um, but a collage is great where you're getting like little hints of what the story is. Um, I think that you could do a really good job if you're doing like a history of something where you're taking little snapshots and pictures of what that history is about. Um, and or a memoir where you're kind of having little peaks of the story underlying it um, and, and being able to use it where it's not just a, you know, a photo album kind of thing, but there's these block colors in there, maybe that Viva Magenta Pink, uh, where you're um, kind of creating some mystery while also having a, a hint or a peek at it. Now, this one I do think may end up being a little uh, formulaic. So it may, in a couple of years, look really kind of aged and dated because, you know, 99designs 
or you know canva might have like a plug and play template that you end up using and it ends up being everywhere kind of like the the ripped cover the ripped page design that's kind of everywhere uh, right now and it kind of has aged the book so of all the ones we've looked at i think this one might be the one to age out the fastest but i do um i i do think right now it's really striking and will get create that curiosity for people to click on the thumbnail and then the use of hand-drawn letters and fonts. Um, anything that is a, a slight difference where you can see it, but it's intriguing, um, it, it kind of draws the eye in. Um, and uh, I think that hand-drawn lettering is something that is a lot more accessible now than it was um, in the past. So, uh, I like for example you could go on to uh de fonts or, or a thousand fonts or something like that and there's a lot more that's available now for commercial use than there ever has been in the past and so um you know making good use of hand drawn lettering and swash fonts uh is something that you likely are going to see uh, a lot more of this coming year now on that note we are going to see a lot of I just noticed that my face had been up there the whole time. I thought I was invisible and just talking with my hands to a, an audience of one. So awesome for me. Um, and, oh, I'm kind of going to take a moment here and just kind of appeal. Yep. Big fonts. Yep. Agree. Um, and when it comes to, you know, technology making things more available, like those collage covers and the um, uh, the uh, the fonts that are available, you know, I think technology is going to suddenly be making leaps and changes um, this year when it comes to writing and images. Um, so like, for example, the, the big thing all over my email is like learn about chat G, GPT right now. And, you know, it's it's AI that has been trained from the Internet to write. Um, and I've got friends who are writing their ads and uh, we've got all kinds of um, experimentation that is happening with AI right now. That is going to be a big trend for 2023. Um, and a couple of things about uh, chat GPT in particular and, and automated text. Um, if you plan on writing your book with uh, chat GPT or a similar technology, um, one, if it's a nonfiction book, it only knows what the internet knows. And so it, you're gonna need to really fact check what you're doing um, on top of which, when you submit your book to a publisher like um you know to kindle or to any of the other um platforms that are out there they do run a plagiarism check so you have to rewrite what it writes enough that when it's coherent and doesn't immediately read as you know computer generated two is factual and three that it is going to pass a plagiarism check and be completely unique to you um so I would look at that tool as being more of a first draft, what we would call a dirty first draft, that then you go through and all of the steps of editing and make sure that the information ends up um, on, uh, that is factual and unique to you, that you 100% own it. It's not gonna get kicked out by you know the, the bots who are looking for plagiarism. Um, also on the AI front, uh, audiobooks. So we are, you know, seeing the technology about five years ago now, Julie was like, hey, there's a webinar going on and they say they've got a really cheap, great way of doing uh, audiobooks. And I sat through the entire thing for an entire hour. And then they were like, okay, and it's AI generated and it sounded horrible. I was so embarrassed for them. And now five years later, it's amazing like you can sort of tell that it's not quite a person who's doing the reading but for nonfiction books and for your backlist 
it might be something that you want to experiment with. We are going to be running an experiment with a, a title on our backlist as well to try and work through um, the, uh, the, the process and see how it goes and see if we like the, the end product and if what the response is from readers of if they like it or not. But um, Apple very publicly is saying, yes, please submit this kind of content to us. And so is Google. So um, what Audible is gonna end up doing, nobody really knows Audible, we'll get into a little bit more, but when it comes to fiction, if you have a fiction book, even though we are nonfiction based, I'm gonna throw this in there. Um, Fiction is really important to get the right emphasis in the right place and to build the tension. You probably are still going to need a, a, a narrator, like a human being narrator on that one. And when it comes to memoirs, what you bring to your own story as your own reader is still going to be very important. Um, it's, it's important to me uh, like as someone who's reading like maybe a, a, a memoir, um, let's use Prince Harry for an example, he really wanted to set his story straight. And so his delivery put the emphasis on where he wanted people to focus um, in his book. So if you are writing a memoir or something very deeply personal, I would still consider uh, personal narration rather than having a computer read it. Um, when it comes to AI generated images, and I know I feel like I'm going super fast here. I'm sorry if I am. Um, you know, tell me if I need to slow down. Just, just you know, pop it into the chat. I am checking. Um, but when it comes to AIs and computer generated um, images, there's a lot of gray area here that is yet to be really sussed out, especially in the courts. But uh, all of these images that are being created are using pieces of images that already existed. So while text you can turn around and, and you know you've got a source material and you can rewrite it, and make it your own, when it's come when a, an AI is generating an image, it's grabbing things from the internet that may be you know public use, but maybe not and very likely is not. And then it's inspiring the AI to you know generate whatever. But the the components of that inspiration are still in the end product. And, and sometimes you can very clearly see like, oh, they've taken a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger and a picture of Jet Li and mashed them up to create a very muscly Asian looking person that doesn't look particularly real. So, you know, could you get sued by Arnold Schwarzenegger or Jet Li? Possibly. Um, and, I, I would just be really careful about how you, you use and source those images. And if you are putting information into one of these AI generators, you may want to start with stock photos that you own the image and the rights to so that you can get around it if the uh, AI magic does something really great that you do want to use on the cover or in the interior of your book. And you do always want to credit if credit is necessary, especially on, um, you know, sites like um, Unsplash, where they, they have crediting uh, requirements that, that you honor those, even if it's not 100% th that image by the time that you use it. Cover designers have been doing similar for years where they'll grab a stock photo, grab stock photo, uh, Photoshop them up together, but they still have to credit like they're supposed to. It's just the AI is doing it now. You still need to make sure that you have the rights to the source material. All right, next up, trending wise, social media. And it's gonna be a, a running theme on this. You know, we kind of touched in it with AI and making things cheaper and faster. Um, you know, as the economy is adjusting, there's a, a lot of people are saying like, we're in an economic slowdown. You know, last year, the stock market was very flat. Um, you know, so far this year, it hasn't been terrible, but, you know, where is the overall economy going with inflation, with people needing raises? Um, you know, are, are we going to be tightening the belt as a, a world economy coming up? Um, the, the 
theory is when it comes to social media, yes, and marketing budgets, that uh, some of the bonuses that have been happening for influencers to feature a product or for an influencer uh, to get X many views and get paid a bonus, uh, that that those things are, are going to change. They're going to become less. Uh, when the market has a downturn, one of the first things that gets cut is the marketing budgets. And I think that these influencers are going to see a, a tightening of the belts and of the wallets and maybe change what they're featuring um, so that they can stay in business or give up altogether. Um, so things like book talk, uh, maybe a play, paid placement on book talk for a book. Um, sorry, if you're not familiar, uh, TikTok has hashtags and book talk, which is B-O-O-K-T-O-K. Uh, is like the hashtag for people to be sharing books and recommendations. Uh, the influencers in those spaces may end up um, changing as well. Um, I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. So how about, Angela, let's do a giveaway. I think we've had a few people on here. Um, I want to, you know, give a, a participation kind of trophy here. So if we can find the 24th person to comment today who is not a Book Watchers employee, <laughs> Angela, um, then go ahead and let's shout that person out and let's get them a prize. Maybe it's someone who's making a food recommendation and I can look at that again because I am still hungry. Um, yeah, let's look for number 24 because it is the 24th day of the month. Yes, prizes. Um, <laughs> yes, we've got BookTube, Book Talk, Bookstagram, all of the things. I am talking about Book Talk because I am, you know, a lurker on TikTok to get book re recommendations. Um, hopefully, Angela is still here and counting down to 24 for us. Um, and while she's doing that, I will go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is um, digital lending. So in 2022, um, huh, Mike won. Yay, Mike. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, so in 2022, there was a a lot of lawsuits going back and forth about libraries and their ability to let people borrow ebooks. Um, and the ebook thing has been contentious for a while when it comes to libraries because you can sell one book to one individual and they're paying you X amount of dollars versus one book to a library and there's very many, many readers to it. And there's a little bit of a balance that happens between um, the you know, finder and readability and, and finding your tribe versus, uh, you know, getting compensated for your work. And uh, when it comes to libraries, they've been wanting to, you know, help with the readership side of it, but they're in a fight with publishers about the compensation side. So there's still a lot of back and forth that's happening, a few lawsuits that are pending so far you know, the judicial system has really been coming down on the side of the publishers, uh, but libraries are still trying to find ways to make things work in their budgets, especially because um, after the pandemic, you know, during the pandemic, everybody naturally was not a physical user. They There was a lot of people who were just online, you know, downloading their, their books on Libby and Overdrive and Hoopla, all those great library apps. Um, but what we're seeing is that after the pandemic, um, digital reading is still up. Audiobooks and ebooks are still like much more popular with librarians than physical copies and going into um, a physical library. So very interesting. Um, there is a pending lawsuit that's happening with a company. It's, it's not really a company. It's like an internet archive called Open Library, where they digitize books and let one person borrow that book at a time. Um, 
nobody's getting compensated in that other than the physical copy that was originally sold um, is getting digitized. And then per copy that they digitized, they lend it out one, one book at a time. And so there's a lawsuit pending on that right now as well. Um, I expect that uh, Open Library will end up closing um, and that the, the judicial system will come down on the, the side of the publishers again. Um, but there are still going to be a lot of business models out there where they're trying to find a way to get digital information and, and digital books into uh, libraries in a way that the authors can still be compensated. But of course, the, the publishers are the ones that are leading this charge and they're the ones who really want to be compensated. Um, next up, let's talk about genres. Um, so YA fiction grew by about 3% last year. And the major driver of that was social media like uh, book talk and, and bookstagram. Um, and so if we see the tightening of the belt that we expect in social media, then that may um, end up being something that is that trends back down but for now you know it's riding strong um with the uh the ya fiction sales romance authors are finding a whole new generation of readers right now which is really fascinating so uh it's not that all of a sudden you know unknown authors are becoming known or that you know, historically well-selling, you know, authors like Nora Roberts or uh, Danielle Steele, all of those authors are suddenly producing more. It's actually, um, you know, new readers who are coming into the marketplace and reading the backlist. And, you know, there's just a, a sudden interest in romance, which is really kind of sweet as far as I'm concerned. Um, in the nonfiction realm, uh, we are seeing, let me, hold this up here since the bottom. Um, we are seeing that nonfiction sales were down in 2022, but of the books that are selling, um, the winners in the genre was business, entrepreneurship, economics, um, and travel books. Now people are traveling again, they're, they're out and running around. Um, but if you have a job on like career change, uh, a book on career change, we would expect that one's going to do pretty well this coming year. And as people are, are figuring out the new economy, um, then, then those books will continue to sell well, as well as entrepreneurship. Now, let's see. We are like 30 minutes into this thing. And I do have one more bugaboo to talk about, which is Audible. Um, really interesting. So Brandon Sanderson, who's a really big fantasy writer, uh, really likes to have his books on um, in audio and in digital in libraries. Um, so relating back to that open library thing and to you know how we get compensated. And because he chooses not to be exclusive with Audible, he only gets paid 25% with Audible. Um, and so with his you know new books that he's releasing, he actually struck a deal with Spotify to help them raise their platform. Um, which I think is really interesting to try and break the Amazon, you know, they, they kind of own the marketplace when it comes to audio, audible and, and audiobooks right now. Um, and what audible has done for a while now, and it's a little sketchy is that they do not let authors or publishers choose their pricing. They say, okay, you supply your book to ACX which is owned by Amazon. And then ACX will supply it to their exclusive group, which is um, you know, Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. And that those are the retailers that pick what the prices are based on what they wanna sell. And that ACX will pay you 30 days after the fact. You know, like the only thing good in there is that ACX pays you within 30 days um, after the close of the business month. Whereas in print, it's like 60 and 90 days, depending on what, who your distributor is. But the issue with Audible is that you have no control of your pricing. Um, if you have a really, really long book, and especially if we're talking like um, yeah, epic fantasy, um, long fiction books, but in general, you know, some memoirs tend to be really long as well. 
uh, they are selling their, you know, their credits at $15. And so what they would do is they would say, okay, this book, if you pay regular price is $45. And then if you buy uh, one of our credits, it's only $15. So why would anyone ever have a, you know, purchase a $45 book? Um, but how the compensation worked is if somebody paid $45, they were supposed to pay you 40%. If someone paid for the $15 credit, then they were supposed to pay you a 40% out of that. But it's not really how it has ever worked. Um, three years ago, I worked with Audible. I, I sat down with someone at ACX and went through their compensation model. And they would say, okay, so your your book might be worth $45 priced, but we have an adjustment range on that so that we don't have to pay you, you know, 40% on a $50 book if we're only making $15 on it. And so they they had like a an equation that they would apply per book to it. And once that equation was set, then they would never change it, but they would still be fluctuating the price. So sometimes it was a haircut for you. Um, and you weren't really getting the full amount. So um, all of this is a point because today they announced that they were going to try and sell more books across their entire site by lowering everyone's prices for their audiobooks. And no one has a say over what that price is. So I can see a lot of uh, audiobook creators being upset about that. So my prediction for 2023 for Audible, or at least ACX, is that this is going to be the year of the class action lawsuit because I don't see that going over very well. I think people are going to be um, tired of not being able to control their pricing, not being able to control their distribution. Uh, you've got the Brandon Sanderson's who are trying to open up uh, other alternatives like Spotify, iTunes, um, you know, find a way voices, things like that. But I, I really think that uh, when it gets down into the money, that there's probably some dirty dealings that are happening there, and maybe you know a larger player in that space. Book launchers in general, uh, our our audiobooks tend to be on the shorter side, so I don't think that we're really going to be affected by that. But uh, I, I think people who are making their bones in like the epic fiction, fantasy, really long novels are going to be hurt drastically by this. And there should be a class action lawsuit about it to break up the the hold on the pricing and the distribution that Audible has had up until this point. Um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yes, the, the Royal Bank of Scotland terms and conditions. I do think all terms and conditions at this point are suspect. Um, and you need a fine tooth comb to it. Um, so I think probably before we go today, and I should have asked this already, but uh, I would love to hear what was helpful for you out of this content. And if there was a, a fact or uh, a little tidbit that you thought was particularly interesting, um, I think we'll probably end up uh, grabbing one of the chatters and giving you a random prize. So I'm not going to ask a skill question per se, but I am going to ask you to you know, kind of let me know what you think was most useful. I'm going to get you more content like that. And then, um, yeah, I will get you some kind of prize. Uh, if anyone wants to say anything, I think my chat is a little bit delayed versus my audio. Uh, Susan liked to see the covers, uh, the genres helped, absolutely. Um, yep, the romance novels, very interesting. Um, Mike, you keep throwing me off because it's night there and I, it is, you know, just past lunchtime here and we are we are at different perspectives on the world for sure you are in the future my friend you could be telling us what the trends of tomorrow are um and yeah uh angela do you want to pick a winner because i i feel like too close to this information i feel like i um 
these are all like my little baby tidbits. I, I'm gonna have a hard time picking a winner from that. So we'll give it another minute for you to, to pop in what you think was useful. And then um, Angela will pick the winner and tell you how to be able to, uh, to get, um, get through to that. Um, other things of note while we wait. Um, question, do you think that the economy is gonna slow down and the belt tightening is gonna be necessary? I think the audible move is in anticipation of people canceling their subscriptions. Um, the way that you know people canceled their Netflix and went to the libraries instead uh, during the Great Recession. That are we are we looking at a cancellation of your Audible subscription and your Netflix subscription, or do you think that maybe they're overreacting? All right, trend on local events. I think that um, it's really interesting, uh, as I was doing research for this, that they were saying that the, the trend is to go niche right now. So instead of being on Facebook, it's actually like a group text of like the people who are really close to you. And I think that uh, local events are gonna become more like that, um, uh, that people are gonna wanna meet in smaller groups and want to, uh, to meet up in in locations it's not going to be all zoom calls anymore i think over the last couple of years we've all gotten really really tired of zoom um and and so i do think that local events do have a a place but i also think that they are going to be small in general there is a a lot of downside safety wise personal safety um here in america for gathering in large crowds. And I do think that uh, you are gonna see um, people want to meet up and, and to be um, close with people that they care about or, or go out for causes that interest them. But I do think that you're gonna see people not going necessarily to big crowds. Um, and it looks like we have Ask McConnell as the winner of the random pick for commenting. Thank you so much. And I think then that unless you guys have some questions, then I'm going to wrap this up. It has been a delight being your guest host and talking about all things books. And I'll give it a minute if anyone has any questions for me. Um, but I think that that probably is going to be it. Waiting for some chats to come in. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, you guys who showed up and participated, thank you so much. It was really great um, to be here. And yes, I, I think Julie will probably be back next month, but uh, on February 7th, it will be another guest host. And I have no idea what the topic is. We'll figure it out later, but thank you and have a good one, everyone.